Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers that cover the NFL on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your host, Aaron Summers. Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. I am Aaron Summers. We are gearing up for the Falcons this weekend. I know the fans get fired up for it. The players definitely want to win, especially bouncing back after last weekend. And we will get into that rivalry matchup and everything that we're expecting in that game in the next podcast. But for today, we are going to address the injuries and shuffling on the offensive line. Head coach Dennis Allen confirmed Wednesday center Eric McCoy did have surgery for his groin. McCoy was put on IR and will miss at least four games. Right guard Cesar Ruiz missed practice with a knee injury. Landon Young was limited with the foot injury that limited him last week in practice as well. All of that means that left guard Lucas Patrick will again be moving over to center. Ali Udo and Young will be your backup guards. Definitely one filling in at left guard and then depending on if Ruiz is able to go or not at right guard. Here is DA on the line. I feel confident in, in our guys being able to go out and execute and, and, and do their job. And um, we got to look, the, the players that are filling in have to step up and, and, and play well. The players around them have to step up and play well. But like this is, this is about a team. This is about 11 guys on offense, 11 guys on defense, 11 guys in the kicking game, you know, going out and executing their job. And, and uh, uh, we'll have 11 guys out there and we, we uh, you know, have confidence and fully expect those guys to go out there and play well. For some more insight into what is going on with the offensive line, how you move from left guard to center, and of course, just getting to know Lucas Patrick a little bit better. We're bringing Lucas Patrick in for the podcast today. It was a really great conversation. I enjoyed getting to know him and hearing some of the intricacies about the positions and what it takes to be successful on the O-line. Lucas, thank you so much for joining me on the New Orleans Saints podcast. It's been a whirlwind, I think, for you joining the team in the offseason, going to California for training camp, spending a ton of time there with the guys, and then obviously the shuffling on the offensive line that we've had here lately. But I just want to check in with you first. How are you? How has the transition to just New Orleans been? Uh, it's been great. Um, it's a very welcoming city. I think uh, I think it might be some of the best fans I've been around. They're just, they're so passionate about all the teams here, especially the Saints and um, learning about the parishes and like, you know, what parish you're from or what <laughs> high school you went to. And so that's been fun. And, uh, I got a, got a buddy where I'm from in Portland, his, uh, his cousin's a firefighter. And so he's kind of giving me some more, even, you know, insider information on new Orleans and I guess new Orleanians. Yep. Um, but it's been awesome. Um, got my family settled down here finally. And, um, yeah, loving it. It's, it's a very vibrant, fun city to, represent so you've gotten a taste of the fans already yeah no um just like going around a shopping store i think i said this in interview but uh we live close to the doornax mm -hmm. uh on veterans mm -hmm. i think and just the interactions there are cool or like even uh you know a little snowball place we found by our house and just that little stuff here and there is awesome and Fans are always sweet and kind, so I appreciate them. Yeah, so you mentioned your family. I think I've seen pictures of a little one. So how old? Yeah, um, we've got a daughter who's about 18 months. And um, so she's, and I guess now from the previous team, she's lived in, I think, three states and Oof. her less than two years of life. So she's she's very good with the flow. Um, yeah, my wife, um, my wife is such a rock in our family and allows me to play this kid's game and travel the, travel the country and so she holds down the fort a lot, even with the full-time job she has, too. Mm, very good. Love to hear that. So training camp in California, how much did that help you get used to the guys you're playing around and really mesh with this team? I, I think it was a huge benefit for a guy who's new to the team, um, figuring out my role and figuring out where I fit in the room. Because um, most training camps... You know, you're there all day, but then when you leave, you're uh, going either back to your house, going back to the hotel. And yes, there's some hanging out, but it almost felt like the longest away trip of our lives, <laughs> you know. And um, 
like we got into a routine where uh, Eric, Sal, um, C's, Oli, like a lot of us would cold tub after walkthroughs. Then we go sit and have dinner and, you know, even, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, sitting at dinner and snack and, you know, Cam would be there one night telling stories of, of years of old. I was going to uh, say, I'm sure those stories never end. Yeah. Either. You know, I'm not the oldest guy on the team, but I'm <laughs> closer to the old guys and the young guys. So there's a few where I could add some color commentary or somewhere just sit and listen. And, um, I, th- I think it was really good for the team to bond and really mesh well with both sides of the ball. Cause normally during camp, it's just so much of, you know, O line hates the D line, DBs hate the receivers because we're, you know, we're going at it and we're competitive. Um, but having the time at, you know, the hotel and, and really some kickback time, you know, went to a few movies, went to a few dinners, um, I think was really beneficial. And, you know, I know it's tough for us to be away from the fans. I know the fans really love to, you know, proverbial as they say, get their hands on us mm-hmm. and see what's, see what's happening. But, um, I think it I think it was really good for us as a team or selfishly for me um to really integrate myself into this 2024 team. You mentioned Cam and the D-line O line going at it a little bit. He is very vocal about how he feels about offensive linemen. He says they're dumber and slower. Um but you went to Duke, so you yeah. can't be that dumb. No, and I know Cal Berkeley's no slouch of a school either, <laughs> but uh yeah, I, you know, I think we'd say the opposite about D-line. Of course. No, uh it's um, it's cool having guys like him um, to challenge you because speaking about, you know, the intellectual side of the game, uh, there's a few times during camp where he'd see something or do something or work a move against me. Like, what did you see? And he'd be like, well, you know, for him, like back in 1998 when he got in the league, just kidding. Right? <laughs> uh, you know, he said, like, hey, I used to do this and this. And so, like, having a guy like that is useful if you use that tool because he's um, – gone against i don't know tons of mm-hmm. pro bowl and all pro guard centers tackles because you know he can rush anywhere yeah in in any package and um so the intellectual side's brought out but yeah it won't really flex our degrees too much <laughs> how about being able to work with somebody like jari evans who is you know going to be a hall of famer mm-hmm. um first time in my career because in 2017 he um, did, did a stint in Green Bay and my first career start, I was at left guard and he was at right guard. Mm. So it's like a really cool, um, it's cool for me personally. Cause I, you know, he clearly saw me as a younger player back then and developing. And, um, of course, when he came to us, like I knew who he was, like nobody didn't know who he was. And then now to see him coaching, uh, he, get, he, he has his toolbox is massive. I think that's why he played at such a high level. I mean, he's, strong powerful and played played the game how it should be played but his toolbox has different sets to use how to use hand usage when to do certain things uh i think that's what made him a lead in my opinion and to have him to give us those tools or, or try and take some of the things that he did and say hey Ja, how'd you how would you set this versus this front with the scheme we're running He'd be like, yeah, you know, here's your ultimate assignment, but you can kind of do this to make the defensive le- leverage work against him and just little things like that. And um, his personality is awesome to work with, too. Uh, just the way he approaches coaching um, and being so in, ingrained in this Saints culture, it's I think it adds an edge to us because um, how are you not going <laughs> to how are you not going to trust Ja yeah. and just like the stuff he put on tape and and how dominant he was. Uh, it's, I mean, I think it's might be one of the best assistant line coach I've ever had just because when he says something, it's like gold to us. You have somebody like him, you have yourself, very versatile player. You played in multiple positions and then you have the injuries that have hit the offensive line. Why should the fans not be hitting the panic button right now? Um, because we've prepared for this as, you know, don't don't let my positivity uh, take away from the player Eric McCoy is or yeah um, you know he's a Pro Bowl center he's definitely one of if not the top guy and he's playing well great teammate great dude but we've trained for this in camp I mean uh, it's a credit to the staff for throwing me in when needed during camp and getting reps with four and 
um, letting me swing to both sides and, you know, kind of settled in early in the season at one spot. But they did that a lot with a lot of guys through the line. I mean, yeah, you were all over the place. During yeah. Camp. Yeah. It's uh, it's definitely um, a challenge because you have to see you have to see your plays or the game from a, you know, conceptual level, and not an assignment level. Um, which I think has helped me learn the offense, I think, as quickly. And, you know, there's still things I need to get better at and master, but, you know, it's allowed me to uh, understand the concepts or what we're trying to achieve on a play because mm -hmm. it could be different if I'm front or backside. And so I appreciate the coaches for putting that on my plate um, and trusting me to handle that. Yeah. I mean, in listening to, you know, quarterback Derek Carr and, and Coach Allen, they said that, they felt like you did a great job and you didn't allow any pressures moving from left guard to center. And you obviously rated very well at left guard to start the season. You have the experience mentally. How much does it help that you have played center and you have played a couple different positions? Um, I mean, it helps, you know, it's, I think that's probably the, and I have to actually fifth or sixth time I've been either playing in a different position or been a backup and had to, finish a game out at center. So it, it's not a freak out. Um, but I think it's a credit to the guys in the locker room. And, and I think DC as a leader is as good as they get. Um, the confidence that he instills in the guys around him, yet the accountability that he holds us to is, it's just a different level, but it's not, it's not a, um, it's from a belief standpoint. It's from a encouragement standpoint. And I think as, you know, because my job is to put my body in front of whatever could hit him. Mm -hmm. And when you have that leadership style and you have that utmost, utmost confidence in your guys, uh, it just opens up an extra, you know, valve of effort and, and intensity and, and detail um, that I think, you know, you can give. When you move a position, there's obviously a ripple effect. Somebody else has to come in left guard. How much does this week being able to play alongside the people that you may potentially play next to on Sunday help you kind of become more of a cohesive unit in, in the way you're pulling and moving? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's one of the trends that's really coming to the league and it's definitely college football is changing and kind of moving guys around. Um, but there is something to be said with continuity. There's something to be said with, you know, our body types are just so different and how somebody moves in something or how somebody feels when they fit into something is just different than the guy next to them. So those reps are uh, at the utmost importance. And, you know, once you get into the season, you don't have as many. Mm -hmm. But again, credit to how JB and Josh structured the rotation early on. I don't think there's a combo we'll play in a game where we haven't actually had a rep either in spring or fall or training camp. Um, so we, we have to rely on that. And that's, that's why that's so important early in the season is because we, you know, 17 games is a long time. You never know what'll happen. You never know when all of a sudden you think you're going to play next to one guy and then, you know, a snap later, somebody comes in, you got to rely on your training mm -hmm. and trust what you've done to that point. When you play a team like the Eagles, who clearly were just going to load the box six and one front, I mean, something different than you've seen or the Saints have seen this season. How does it almost help you now going forward that you've seen it, you've played against it? And then on the flip side, I'm sure other teams are going to look at that and say, well, the Eagles had success playing this defensive front against them. Yeah, I mean, it's a, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a scheme that you don't, play a ton of reps in in the open field. It's more of a common short yardage goal line. Um, so to run open field plays is tough, but we will rely on the learning experiences from Sunday and coach up the things we didn't do well, coach up the things we did do well. And um, you kind of, uh, with each week, you got to flush it, but you got to keep a memory banker as I don't know if I'm old enough to say this, but a Rolodex, <laughs> you know, you got to flip through and um, hey, you know, the Eagles pulled out that 6-1 immediately and they were stressing us here, 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 and that's where we have to win and that's when your fundamentals have to take over and your techniques have to be perfect. Um, and moving forward, if we see it again, we need to 
need to capitalize on what we learned from the Eagles. When things are clicking and moving well, how fun is it to block for Alvin Kamara and Taysom Hill? It's it's a blast. Um, I mean, there's one play that comes to mind and block for some, I felt like pretty good backs in my career. And we had one play where he scored. Uh, we were in the low red against Dallas. And I mean, I didn't even think it was a hole watching it. You know, when you're blocking people in the game, you're like, oh, <coughs> that was probably massive. He got in. Yeah. You watch it on film, and I think Bink said it best. His contact balance is the best I've ever seen. And, um, yeah, Alvin is Alvin is special. And then Taysom might be the best just football player I've ever played with. He's so smart. And, and you know, I think playing multiple positions is one of the harder things to do, and he's doing it in every phase. Yeah. And, and even underestimated is the special teams roles that he'll, he'll play and mm-hmm. all that on his plate and – you know, even blocking for Jamal is, you know, I've done that before in my career. Man, he's <laughs> he is so fun. And uh, it's it's a all the weapons we have that we get to open up holes for is exciting because we know if we get them one on one with the guy we're scheming to get them one on one with, we, we think we're going to win that matchup. Coming into the season, we didn't really know what the Kubiak offense was going to look like. We heard a lot about it being offensive line friendly looked like that was the case everything was clicking in an area that people had reservations about just because of the new players on the line is there kind of like this motivating factor that goes into it like everyone's talking about the offensive line so we're gonna go out there and make sure that we prove them wrong yeah I think um you know I've necessarily been here with that talk um but the few guys that have I think they attacked an off season differently than I've mm-hmm. seen other teams attack. Um, you know, the the bona fide leaders in the room, I may be older, but it's, you know, Eric and C's. And I think those guys carried that weight and, and set the tone for everybody. You know, you can say a scheme's friendly in anything. You still have to execute it. You still have to go out and strain. You still have to hit your aiming points. Um, and those guys set a standard that we all had to match. And Mm -hmm. if you weren't willing to match it, they would check you. And so it's a credit to those two um, because I think they're both playing at an extremely high level, which everyone else benefits from. When you got the two guys who are the cornerstones of the O-line saying, put it on us, we'll we'll get this right. It, you know, it adds kind of what Derek did, but like adds that accountability of like, well, if these guys are doing it and they're giving this and they're sacrificing x y and z away from the building like what what can't i do like why why can't i go to the extra level you've spoken highly of trevor penning who took a little while to find his footing here seems like he's solidified a a good role for himself and is feeling confident what he's doing and then taliese fuaga coming in as a rookie doesn't seem like anything phases him what have you seen from from those two younger players um i i think trevor is in all you know, all definitions, uh, a football player, that guy wants to play football, play football, how it's meant to be played. I know there's, you know, a lot of people want to go, you know, throw it around or whatever. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, football is about blocking and tackling. Mm -hmm. And that dude loves to block. Um, you know, I wasn't here for any of the so-called noise or what, what people say. The only thing I can go off is the kid I've seen since, when I signed in May and and he works so hard, he challenges himself. He he doesn't um he doesn't allow the mistakes to really bog him down. Um and I think we believe in him. I think belief can do a lot for a player, um, especially when, you know, your guys who see what you do and understand what is being asked of you, and then you go out and execute, it it allows that player to become himself and be himself. Um, and then Tali, <laughs> like literally is the best human. Uh, <laughs> I think if, you know, I think he would say, yes, sir. If we allowed him, like he is, he's respectful, kind kudos to his parents. They raised a wonderful man. I mean, he's, he works so hard. He's, he's extremely talented, but talent only gets you so far in this league and he's committed to doing things the right way. Um, He's earned my trust and, you know, not that I'm the be all end all of anything, but 
I've seen some games. I've seen some other tackles do things. Mm-hmm. I've played, you know, next to a first-team All-Pro left tackle. And I trust him like I trusted that guy. And when he sees something and says something, I'm going to ride with him because he's earned that with the way he works, the way he prepares, and, like, the person he is. And he fits right into the mold. And, um, like, he, it's like I forget he's a rookie sometimes. Like, he's almost like that third-year player that's, really figuring things out and starting to take command of, of their career. But both, both those guys are, you know, you can say it's online friendly or whatever, but we're, we're asking them a lot in Mm -hmm. the run game and they're, they're really setting the tone when you're trying to run zone, like without a tackle who can't dent an edge and get an aiming point, it's kind of hard to run true wide zone. Mm -hmm. So both those guys are really taking ownership of that. And um, it's awesome to watch. It was funny. I talked to Tali during training camp. It was first one-on-one interview with him, and he asked if he could wear his helmet. And I said, no, absolutely. Why? And he's like, well, my hair is not looking the best right now. I I don't know what his idea of, like, his best haircut is because <laughs> it kind of always looks a mess. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a different style, but that's Tali. Like, that's what <laughs> we've grown to love him for. It. Uh, I mean, it's just – it's him. Like, it's – it, I think the coolest part, uh, I guess, that I even compliment him more is he's like unapologetically himself, but in a positive way. Like he's he's not afraid to be proud of his heritage. He's not afraid to, to talk about um, the college he went to and the, and the positive impacts he had. Talks highly of his online coach and his teammates he had. Um, he's not afraid to share some some stuff that he you know whether it's music he likes to listen to or mm-hmm. just kind of talk about himself and. I think when you're when you're confident in yourself and you know who you are, like I think Tali knows who he is and is likes him and is comfortable with him, it allows us to be more comfortable with him and embrace him as himself. Yeah, I mean, he does seem like he's a more mature than 100%. most people may be yeah. at that age, self-aware. You mentioned music there, and I have seen you dancing and singing <sighs> on the field quite often, a little fist bump, like, you know, you're kind of reserved right now, but you let you let you kind of let it. I don't know, like your guard down on the football field a little bit. Yeah. So you're a big music guy. I'm, I'm a, so I'm originally from Nashville, which is you know Music City, USA, and I love music, love all types of music. But um, I I feel so blessed, you know, for the life I'm able to live and the person, you know, like I know who I am. I know I'm loved and saved by God, and I get to be whoever I want to be because I have this like grace. And so like when I get out on the field, it's like this one area where in between those lines, I get to cut it loose, let the emotions fly, be whoever I'm called to be. And it's, it's a beautiful thing when your teammates allow you to do that. And when the guys around you kind of accept you for you and it comes out more like it's so fun having a good block and turning around to Tali or Mm -hmm. Eric and, getting a little head bump or fist bump and um but yeah love music i'm definitely in the traditional countryside but i've i'd probably say i listen to almost anything okay so what's your game day playlist what gets you going um, i would say earlier in my career it was different but now um I, I i'll listen to about anything i've been on a um Let's see here. Like Fathers and Sons by Luke Combs, that album just recently had my daughter. I know it's Father and Son album, but that one's Riley Green, love listening to him. Uh, Sometimes I'll just put on like Al Green radio. Um, You know, I'll listen to a few of the rap songs that happen in the locker room, but I got to be like, hey, guys, who Who is this? Who sings that? (laughs) So I can put it on. Um, You know, can't go wrong with like Queen and the Beatles, like it's, it's really anything, but on game day, I keep it pretty chill. And then like 30 minutes before I kind of just take the headphones out and feel grateful for where I'm at. And, um, cause who knows how many times I'm going to get to be in an NFL locker room and be on an NFL sideline and kind of have run of the place. Um, but yeah, my music, my music taste is pretty wide. Mm-hmm. It, it's been fun watching you because I always try to see people's personalities come out a little bit on the field or on the sideline and stuff like that. And I just noticed that a couple of times at training camp, preseason games and everything. Um, you, you said you're from Tennessee. You end up going to Duke for college. 
and then it's Green Bay, Chicago, and here. So you've been on a couple different teams. How would you describe the Saints, their culture, and how this team is? Um, this team is tight, and this team is about ball. Um, it's, you know, and it, it, like when I say about ball, like everyone's about winning. Like every team says they want to win. But this team, truly everything is about wins and losses. Um, there's a reason the Saints have a rich history as of late of playoff runs and winning the NFC South and um, playing a certain style of football. Like uh, I can say as a team that came in here last year, it was probably the most sore I've been after playing mm. a game, you know, playing the Saints defense. It's tough, fast, aggressive, um, situationally sound. And it's something that when you come behind the curtain, you get why. You see the training, you see the situations that DA put us through in camp. You understand why the the practice load is what it is because you have to get ready for a long season and be ready to win some some tight games. And, and playing fast and physical is an edge. You know, everybody says they're going to play fast and physical, but some people actually – some organizations train it that way, and I, I think I think this organization does that really well and, and really cares about playing football the right way. Playing in Green Bay and in Chicago, outdoor stadiums, a little colder. Is it nice to be here in the Superdome? Yeah, I'm going to go hot take on that. But, Ooh. <laughs> uh, I'm a sweater, and I get I get pretty hot. Uh, so, yeah, this Louisiana heat is not for you. It is, and, uh, uh, you know, without – Raising too many red flags. Not the biggest fan of turf. Uh, like I kind of like my natural grass, but um, you can't beat the environment of the Superdome. Again, alluding to, mm -hmm. you know, I played here twice. Once was during COVID, and just seeing how big it was, empty, blew my mind. And the second time I came back, when it was rocking, and uh, you know, the team I was with, we ended up losing. It is you know, your head hurts from the sounds and you're taking in so much. Everything feels uh, just so much faster. I, it's like, because some, some of these new stadiums, and I know the Superdome has a rich history, but some of the stadiums now are built on top. Mm -hmm. Whereas like the Superdome, you have all this width and it's um, like, it's one of those things you got to, like quarterbacks, receivers got to go out and throw in the Superdome to see the, the way the ball, you know, falls and, and track it differently. Like you got to, you got to feel it and the energy as a home team. Like when I ran out the first game versus the Panthers, that intro, like I was tearing up mm -hmm. because of it, – it's a little bit of like um, my personal journey and kind of getting back to playing good ball, but also like feeding off the fans and feeding off like this city and everyone in there that's – I think might be the most resilient group of people I've ever been around. I mean, everything they've been through and how um, everything feels like you're at like almost like a block party and everyone's welcome. And um, yeah, it's, it's been, I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling on that. I hope no, I but you, that's a great way to describe it. The block party and everyone's welcome because everyone's here just trying to have a good time and they don't care who Correct. you are at all. You mentioned what you've been through. I know there's been some injuries in your career. Is that kind of what you're referencing? Yeah, that, um, I had a, had a tough injury stint, um, and, you know, not playing the best ball that I wanted to play in my last, um, stop. And then, you know, sitting at home for a little bit uh, through free agency and um, seeing guys go somewhere or go wherever. But, man, if that wasn't a blessing in disguise and God's plan truly worked out because I I don't think I would want to be with any other team. Like, I haven't loved football like this. Like, I've loved it in a long time. I feel rejuvenated. I feel um, reinvigorated. Coming to work every day, you know, no matter what's put on our plate for practice, lift or meetings, it's like, it's so fun to be in this building and I'm like absolutely loving it. Um, but it's every journey has sticking points. Every guy in their career has things they have to climb over, whether they're big or small obstacles. Um, it's just on the other side of it. Try to be grateful for what you learn from it and continue to grow as a person and a football player moving forward to give whatever organization takes a chance on you, give them 
your best product. I was going to ask you what you like to do for fun outside of football, but it seems yeah. like football is pretty fun for you. <laughs> no, it is. Um, I'll tell you, as soon as the season's over, I downshift pretty hard. And um, having my daughter, you know, when we're in the off seasons in Portland, because um, my wife's uh, work is out there at Nike, and um, I go to quite a few music classes and little gym classes, and we go to the reading time at the library mm-hmm. and just trying to steal as much uh dad time and then i uh, got a few buddies i go and golf with um definitely do a few golf trips every year like uh i think i saw pebble beach in there at yeah i went, went to pebble with two of my former teammates from green bay um that's an awesome spot one of my favorite probably favorite golf destinations sand valley in wisconsin it's okay dream golf they they also have banded dunes and cavett cliffs but just the approachableness they have um what they're doing for golf in the sense of go out, enjoy the walk, bring some good friends, take a good caddy, keep score, don't keep score. Um, don't That's break, what I need. Yeah, it doesn't break <laughs> the bank, but you leave there with a sense of gratitude of, of, yes, the golf's amazing and everything, but a sense of gratitude for the people you're with and kind of the moment in time where you kind of pause cell phones and pause news and you just sit there and, hang out, play 36, go back to a cabin, put a fire on and mm-hmm. crack a beer and tell jokes or just go to bed. Yeah, that's awesome. I One thing I saw in one of your profiles was that you played track and field in high school, mm-hmm. which, you know, offensive linemen get kind of flack because they're not fast. But we yeah. saw Caesar yeah. flying down the field, you know, two weeks ago. So what... What was your event? I was shot in disc. I'm not as okay, fast see, as Caesar. That's what I yeah, was yeah. going to say. was like, I, this could go either way. It could go like, yeah, yeah shot put, disc, disc. No, yeah. I don't think any any scout on any team or anywhere will ever add speed to my player profile. <laughs> but uh, I'll give you everything I have, whatever my top speed is. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for spending this time talking yeah, to me. It's no awesome to kind of get to know you a little bit better. And good luck this weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Again, really appreciate Lucas's time and sitting down, breaking all that down for us. We are going to be continuing to watch the injury report. Running back Alvin Kamara was also out of practice today with a rib injury as well as a hip pointer per head coach Dennis Allen. Cornerback Alante Taylor missed practice with an illness. Linebacker Demario Davis missed with a hamstring. And then Ruiz was the only one that was absent. There were a couple other players also listed. So we'll continue to see what their statuses are as the week continues continues back at practice on Thursday, Friday with that walkthrough on Saturday before the team heads to Atlanta for that 12 o'clock game on Fox on Sunday. In Friday's episode of the New Orleans Saints podcast, we're talking to Fox analyst, Super Bowl champ, Saints legend, Jonathan Vilma. So make sure you circle back and click on the New Orleans Saints podcast wherever you listen Friday to get you ready for that game on Sunday. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.